Today, I'm going to show you how you can get your flocking agents to stick to the ground using May casting. And I'm going to demo this using a herd of uh, rockets. It's too late now, I've done it. So, what have I got? I've got a ground plane that I think is 100 meters by 100 meters, fairly subdivided. If we look at the surface editor, I'm using a couple of procedures on a displacement. And then if we have a look under displacements, that's feeding into this surface displacement. So we could have more or less of what we need there. 10 meters is fine for this example. I also have a little rocket. We're using this for instancing to our flock. So I'm just gonna turn that off. Our flock is gonna follow a path. It's just gonna be circular. We'll keep it really simple. Let's create a null in the center of the scene and we'll call this center. And we'll create another null and we'll call this path. Parent this path null to the center and we'll move it in the Z a little bit, something like this. Then we'll select our center null and go to frame 100 and rotate that 360 degrees. Actually, I want it that way. So let's go minus 360 degrees. So that gives us a nice circular motion on the path. The speed this is rotating is irrelevant. We're just using this to sketch out a path. So that's all done. We'll pop over to the effects tools and we'll go to the flocking option. This will bring up this little box here. We have nothing in here at the moment. Now you may think under the add new, we'll go for path. But what that does is actually creates a new null in there. So obviously what we could do is just parent that to the center and move it. But let's delete that a second. Let's say we've already spent time and effort creating our path and we want to use that. So how do we do that? We'll press P on the keyboard and we'll pop over to the appearances tab. Under this little drop down here, we want to use flock director. So we'll double click on that. And where it says director type, we want to change that to path. Let's try and make this a color we can see. Sometimes you can do this and it doesn't actually update, in which case you just hit the calculate button briefly. The first thing that I hope you can see is that the resolution of this circle is very low. So under stepped, let's just go and make this a lot larger. We want to make these hoops a little larger as we'll be flying through these. So shift H and scale them up. I also might make that path a little wider. So frame zero, let's move it on to Z a little bit further out. So there we go. That's our path sorted for now. Let's get a flock in there. And this is where we will come back to this flocking window. So we'll click on that. Under add new, we'll go for generator. Here it is right at the origin. Let's bring it up. We'll bring it over to the side a little bit. And we'll raise it above the ground. We saw a little bit on the small side. So we'll make this larger. Now we don't have to do this, but if we look in the top view, we'll make sure our box is within the ground plane area there. Now, unfortunately to see changes, we've got to hit the calculate all motions button each time. So let's do that and see what we have. That's nice and quick, but as we can see, they're all running very slowly indeed. So let's do a few changes. We'll jump over to the agents tab. Let's increase the acceleration and increase the maximum speed to 50. Let's see what that does. So that's much better. It's kind of doing what we expected it to do. It's just going straight through the path. If I go over to the generator, I might stagger the end frame actually. So we'll, we'll type in 60 there, hit calculate. There we go. So they're slightly more staggered. We can come and make changes to all of this later, but the main issue is that we need it to stick to our plane. We'll do that now. So flocking is selected and we'll need to edit nodes. This is what we have. And the first node we need is a Raycaster node. So we want Raycast Geometry. Let's double click on this and we want to activate the ground object. That's what we're looking for. And we want to go on the minus Y because we're here and we're looking down. So we can keep all of that on default. Take position into the Ray origin and the intersect into the new position. We'll go back to our other window and hit calculate all motions. Now you'll notice it takes slightly longer this time to calculate than last. But as you can also see, it ain't doing what we want it to do. 
So there's one little extra step we need to make. We'll go back to the nodes and we'll add a scalar. And we'll type a positive number in here. I'm just gonna put in 10. If your agents are fast out the gate, I found that they will still pass through that ground if the scalar value is too low. And we'll take the output and we'll put it in the offset, this case. Let's pop back to this window and calculate all motions and see what happens. If we now look at what's happening, we can see the flock is following the contours of a ground, which is exactly what we were after. So just to look at the nodes ever so quickly, all we're doing is we're literally taking a position into the rate origin and a positive scalar number into the offset. Now as an alternative, I have seen people add to the position. So if we go for a vector add, let's unhook the scalar. And if we just add, let's go for the same value and hit calculate motions. It's pretty much given us the same result. So there's a couple of alternative methods you could try. All that's left now is to make it look nice. We'll get a reference in there. So let's select the new flock, press P for properties and add an instance generator. This keeps popping up for some reason. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't seem to affect anything. You just have to close it down. It's a bit annoying. Anyway, double click on the instance generator, add object. I've got that little rocket, select that. And under type, we will select, uh, where is it? Particles, there it is. And we'll turn it on so we can see them. And there they are. Now I might have my rockets flying above the ground a little bit. So let's just add an offset for that one. And perhaps. So each of these instances is following their point, but I've just offset it from the ground ever so slightly. Let's go back to the flocking window and add a few variations. We'll click on the flock, go over to the agents. Uh, the range, we're gonna make a little larger, two meters. You see the little bubble around each particle has got a bit bigger. Let's calculate all motions there, see what it gives us. So that gives them a bit more space between each rocket. Now to randomize this up a little further, let's go to the edit. We'll go copy to variant and then we'll add use variants. Now what that should have done is taken all these settings and pasted them in here. So now if I change the range to three, let's perhaps take this down, but this up, I don't know, it's entirely experimental. So what should happen is that each agent should pick a value between the settings in these two tabs. It's a bit like particles where you have a plus and minus option next to each value. Hmm. A little bit too slow possibly for the second. So let's keep this let's pick up to 10. So that's quite nice. And this is where I leave it for you to experiment with the settings. Next tutorial, I may add some volumetrics to these little flames at the back here. Again, I hope that's been of use to somebody.